everyone. Welcome to this video about Joe Pass. I have made videos about many guitar players, but not about Joe Pass, which is kind of weird because it's one of my uh, favorite guitar players. Let's get into it after this intro. So, back to the art stop. Of course, I made many videos uh, with my Gypsy Jazz guitar recently, diving into Django, and it was great. And I'm continuing that uh, series in Rome for my Patreons only, because uh, I've noticed that on YouTube, the views started kind of trailing off of this series, so it was time for a new series. And I thought to switch to the art stop and dive into Joe Pass. So I'm gonna start with this video, and then if it's if it gets many views or enough views, I will continue diving into Joe Pass and specifically into his album called For Django. I thought that was very um, a nice segue maybe into some later Joe Pass stuff. But first, let's look at what Joe Pass does on repertoire normally associated with Django. And I was transcribing his solo on Limehouse Blues. And um, I've selected five of his licks in that solo. And I want to go over with over them with you, demonstrate them on the backing track. And then the other, uh, this, so that's the first chorus. And the second chorus of that solo I will do for my patrons in a uh, Patreon exclusive video. If you want to have access to that video in time, because I'm still doing the Django thing, then check out my Patreon. There's a link in the description and you will get access to that video or, and many other videos only for patrons that I already made. And of course, you can download all the tabs. So the recording of Joe Pass is in A flat, but I uh, transcribed everything in G, uh, in the key of G, so half step down. That's just because that's the key I normally play Limehouse Blues in. So just, I thought it was easier than to just transcribe it immediately in that key. Well, it's one fret down, so it's not a big difference on guitar, but so you know. So let's take a look at the first uh, phrase. Oh. Here it is. So this is, this is his pickup to the solo. And uh, the song is in G, but starts on C, C7. And, but here you see, I wrote down D minor seven, G seven, C. That is just because this licks works on a two, five, one in C as well, because there's only one note on the C. So you don't know if it's C seven or C major seven or C six, but Joe Pass plays is originally uh, in, in the solo break, which you could see as G seven. <laughs> to see because right the song ends like um da, 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 so G7 to C7 and then in the solo break he plays a one, two, three, four, one, two. One, two, three, four, one, two. It sounds great in the in a fast tempo, right? It sounds more impressive. It slowly kind of loses its magic, and that's because of this chromatic trick. Because basically, he's just playing this, but because of this, and then what that note is exactly doesn't really matter. I wrote down some notes, but this is more the effect. What I do is it works great on that two five. Again, I think best uh, place for this kind of lick is in a fast tempo. But I'm gonna demonstrate it in a slow tempo. I'm gonna do it on Honeysuckle Rose. It's a backing track on my YouTube channel for free. I'll I'll put a link and I'll I'll play it there. So I can play it going from C seven to F. So then I have to play it here. Of course, it, it really connects because I end on the root, so I can play all kinds of stuff, all kinds of licks that I know that start with the root, like... Or... Oh. Um, I'm going to turn my guitar down a little bit. Let's see. And then put, turn the back and turn it down in two, of course. 
Um, so I can play it there, then I can play it in the bridge because it's 2 5 to B flat. So then I play it here. So let's let's try it. And of course, I can then also play it maybe on G7 to C7. So then it would be like it's written down in the tab. So I'll just uh, shout um, when I play the lick in different keys. Here we go. Here we go. time that was not all that great octave lower In B flat you can play it easily an octave lower on the lowest four strings because the fingering stays exactly the same. And again, that, that chromatic note is not important. That's why when it's slow, it kind of loses its magic because then you hear that chromatic note. And when it's fast, it's just an effect. Okay, let's go to the next lick. It's a little bit more... Um, usable also in slower tempos but and uh, but listen to the original recording right you can hear how, how great that that previous leak sounds in that fast tempo so this is um he plays this at the start of a solo it's just a long lick for c7 and it sounds like this one two three four <laughs> Difficult part. Let's jump. Two, three, four. Um, yeah, you can play this, of course, on uh, Hansa Rose in the first four, uh, four bars, C7. Uh, th so this lick lasts um, three bars. If you want to play it on the two five, you could play the first two bars like this, and then res resolve. Like this, for example. Now you have a nice 2 5 1 lick. And then I can play it in B flat 2. Uh. So let me try that. Thank you. 
that's not the easiest to play because of this fingering. But you can get used to it. It's, it's, it's also new for me, I just transcribed it today. But I think it's very usable. Let's go to the next one. He plays this on A7. It sounds like this, one, two, three, four. Very easy. Of course, it's kind of an idea from the diminished scale. So this one fits over A7. It would actually also fit on C7. But for now, let's just uh, play it like it's written in the tab. So then you would start on the fifth of the chord. So if you want to play this on C7, you have to start on the G. So. And then we could play this, could we play this in the on the 2-5? Let me see, is there any way I could make it work? Could we play it on F7? You could resolve it, I'm not, I'm not sure if it works. I will try it in the bridge, I'm not sure it will sound great, but I can at least play it on C7, right? I started early now because, uh, of course, I have your three bars. So I started before the two five. You can do that. It's a cool little lick, though, if you have a long dominant chord, like Lima Blues, like um, um, Black Bye Bye Blackbird on the G G minor. Could you play it there? No, not really. Maybe what's another song with long dominant chords? Sweet Georgia Brown is one. Um, just one of those things. Does it have that? Well. Any song with a long dominant chord, you can play this. Ah, okay, here we have a 2 5 one lick to minor. And he plays this at the end of Lime Mouth Blues, where the chords are actually G, E7, A minor. And then he plays this, one, two, three, four. It fits perfectly on G, E7, A minor. Now, but G, G6 or G7, actually, G7 and B diminished, have diminished, are the same kind of chord. Or they are the same chord, they're just a different root. So this phrase kind of fits on B half diminished. Maybe that E is, is weird, but it's only one note. So you could play this on the 2 5 to A minor. So, of course, I cannot demonstrate this on Hunter Gross because there's no uh, 2 5 in minor, but I can maybe play it on minor string. Minor string. Yeah, play it on minor string. It's also my. Um, uh, channel. I'll put the link in the description. And there is the chords are A minor, uh, D minor six, and then it's E seven for two bars. And not E seven for two bars. I can play that. Let me try that. Only, the only thing is, you really want to uh, 
have the minus chord there. You could you could fit it over E7 uh, if you want to, like minor string, but it sounds very surprising when you play it. But maybe it's a nice effect. Maybe I should do it with more conviction. Let's do it again. Put the record a little bit louder. Kind of a cool effect. Kind of a um, you start and it's like oh what's happening and then you resolve it very nicely. So great, great little phrase. Fits perfectly on line mass blues, but you can make it work on a two five one in minor too. And then the last phrase is a two five one in major, a very uh, typical kind of bluesy chromatic Joe Pass thing. One two three four. <laughs> So I, I play this this stuff on different places, on different frets than, than Joe Pass probably. I mean, this is just audio, but I always use my own fretboard visualization system to put things on the neck. If, you, if this is the first video you ever watch of mine, I have this fretboard visualization system, which I call the Van Hammer system. There's a link to that system in the description and explanation. But for instance, this lick, for me, it starts it's, it is in the, what I would call the first position of A minor. Uh, sorry, this, the, the third position of A minor, because the third of A minor is right here. So my first finger is around those frets, and then it starts, not on that note, but my hand's in that position. Uh. So I want to play it in, um, let's say, in E flat, so then it would be in the third position of F minor, which is here. So to play it on um, Hans Gross, I have to play it, of course, in F. So then it would be here. I can play it on the two five and B flat. Let's try that. Oh, sorry, this is minor string still. Um, Hunter Gross, here we go.
I tried to play all the licks in this PDF. Let me see if I succeeded. I played this one for sure. Ah, of course, I didn't play this one because it's a minor 2-5. This one I played in the 2-5. Play this one. Ah, I didn't play this one. But for this tempo, this is my, it's not the nicest. Okay, this is, I think, a good start to start uh, our journey into Joe Pass. I hope people will like it. I hope this gets many views. Share If you are a Joe Pass fan, share it with friends because then I will continue looking into Joe Pass. Of course, if it doesn't get uh, views, not enough views, then I will search for another uh, topic. But uh, I kind of hope it's going to be Joe Pass because I really like um, getting deeper into his stuff. Of course, I'm going to do at least one video uh, about Joe Pass uh, Patreon exclusive. If you want to have access to that video, check the link in the description. And uh, otherwise, I will see you in the next video here on YouTube. Until then, bye.